My computer has one huge problem. Uh, the mouse. And recently I realised it's a problem that every single mouse has. Because even though some are designed to be more comfortable, they're still a mass manufactured generic shape. So today I'm going to try and make the world's most ergonomic mouse that's fully customised to my hand. But as this monstrosity clearly isn't going to work, I'm going to be using some of this, some of this and a lot of this. But to build a custom mouse, first I'm going to need to know how a mouse actually works. The inside mechanics all start with an LED at the back that shines a light onto a surface. Then this image sensor takes a ton of readings of the texture on that lit up surface and uses them to figure out where the mouse has moved to, which is then all fed back to your PC through the cable and moves this little pointy stick, along with any signals that are sent back when you use the clicky buttons at the front. But to make a mouse from scratch, I would need hours of research to learn how to wire circuit boards and how to then program that to my computer. So instead of that, I've decided I'm going to repurpose one of these pre-built mouse kits, because not only do they come with everything I'm going to need, but they were originally designed for having custom made 3D printed outer shells put on top of them. So this means basically all I have to do is design a custom shaped grip in my CAD software and get myself a 3D printer for the job, which luckily I had lying around in a box from Bamboo Lab. Simple. The problem with trying to make the most comfortable mouse in the world is always going to be accuracy, and using traditional measuring techniques or trial and error is basically impossible, because no matter what I end up designing, my hand will naturally fall into that position when testing it, even though it might not be the most comfortable position for my hand long term. So the only way to know for sure that my hand is at its most natural rested position is to somehow print a perfect shape to fit inside this gap. And that's where this stuff comes in, because not only is it extremely satisfying to play with, but it's also the perfect consistency for making a temporary custom mould of something. And as it's so flexible, I can squeeze it into all the important support areas without it altering my grip, which is great until it gets stuck to your desk. <laughs> After I'd carefully got the mould unstuck, I did have some doubts about the aesthetic, but figured I'd just have to trust the process until the end. So the next step is to scan this shape into my computer. But as it doesn't fit in my photocopier and most 3D scanners are insanely expensive, How much? I'm going to try and do it using in my iPhone, because this little black dot on the back is a LiDAR scanner, and whilst I look at what that means, I'm going to make a DIY turntable to hold my mouse on, which is actually a great example of why having one of these 3D printers is crazy useful, because this little custom turntable took a few minutes to model as just a basic circle and a polygon extruded upwards, then I just put the file into my slicer and sent it across to my printer without even leaving my desk. So after a few minutes and less than a dollar of filament, I can attach it to my drill and with the help of some gaffer tape I should be able to rotate the mouse 360 degrees and get a full scan of the object. After deciding that manually controlling the drill was a better idea, I started getting my scan. But even though I'd set up everything right, I couldn't get the LiDAR scanner to actually work. And as I had pretty much no experience with 3D scanning, I'm not completely sure why. Other than it seems LiDAR is more designed for quickly scanning larger areas and spaces rather than stationary objects. So I switched over to photo mode where I basically had to take a sequence of photos all around the object to get as much detail as possible. And the results were incredible. This whole scan was produced purely from my phone camera, which just blows my mind. And now that I have my scan completed, I can make a couple of adjustments on my computer, send it to my printer and hit print. After a couple of hours I had my first prototype, which was actually a pretty great fit first time except for these sharp edges and bumps. But after smoothing them out and printing a new version, it was actually really comfortable to hold and move around my desk. So now all I had to do was add some buttons to the front and the electronics to the inside, which if I'm honest was a real nightmare. I spent hours trying to come up with ways to do this well and think how I could improve the overall look of this thing whilst I was at it. But then I remembered the whole point of this project is to make the world's most comfortable mouse, not the world's best looking mouse, which means I can't touch this outer shape at all, because if I do then it will change that super comfortable grip I spent so long scanning in earlier. So in the end I settled on making two buttons that print separately to avoid getting these layer lines all down them, which click into these hinges underneath. I also hollowed out the middle section so the electronics kit fits nicely inside, but like the rest of the mouse I'm sacrificing looks for functionality, so it should all work great but this slope at the front meant I didn't really have much choice on how the buttons would work. The mouse wheel is also more sunk in than I'd have liked, but this extra long slot should mean I can easily slide my finger across and get an extended turn on it. So now I was as happy as I could really be, I fired up my printer for one last time.
After the final print was done, all I had to do was assemble all the parts together, which gave me time to reflect on not only this project, but also the new printer by Bamboo Lab. Because even though I've just about got my head around being able to create something on a screen, then manufacture it myself at home, I still find it crazy how easy printers like the A1 have made it now. Whether it's experimental projects like this mouse, organizers for your home, or spare parts for broken appliances, the A1 has enough tech jam inside it to cope with it all and even rival far more expensive machines. All for what is a pretty affordable price, considering in my opinion, it's the best all round consumer level 3D printer currently on the market. And after tackling a whole load of different prototypes of this project, it finally came up with this. The world's most comfortable computer mouse. Well, kind of. So the mouse isn't exactly what I had planned when I started this project. In my head I had envisaged something that looked incredible as well as being the perfect custom fit for my hand. But it seems there is a reason why these mice are the way they are, to find the perfect balance between ultimate comfort and aesthetics. So for longer sessions at my desk I'm definitely going to be testing my new mouse out, but I think taking it to a local coffee shop to work might have to wait for version 2. 